welcome love and blissfulness to you all it's Trisha O'Neill the elevator once again here with you welcome to the channel the elevation show with me Trisha O'Neill and today we have got an amazing interview for you why because we have an amazing brother sitting right beside me why is he amazing I'll tell you because he is none other than the international that's right, I said the international, worldwide, <laughs> all over the globe, winner of the Commonwealth Short Story Prize. 2023. 2023. <laughs> this is my friend, my brother, and the champion, put Jamaica on the Mac, Kwame McPherson. Please. Give him a round of applause. Welcome him, Kwame. Welcome. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm, of course I'm, you're great. I'm wonderful. Yeah, man. Of you course. must be wonderful. Yeah, it's man. official. Yeah. You've won. Yeah. You are the international. You've literally put Jamaica know, on right. the flipping map. I know, brother. right? You put them on the map. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> what can I say? Yes, you, you put them think? on the map. Straight from England yeah. to Jamaica. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, we've brought you here today on the show because we want to hear more about you, your journey, and what your future endeavors are right. now that you are this international superstar, okay? <laughs> international superstar. Yes. <laughs> I want to kind of all this. Yeah, international superstar, listen down. No, okay, international you know. superstar. Right, yeah. you're a superstar writer. Yeah. Okay. So you like to use the word that you're an authorpreneur. That's correct. Okay. Talk us through that a little bit. An authorpreneur. Uh, right. So, so basically, I'm, I'm, I'm a writer, uh, first and foremost, but I'm also an entrepreneur. And I've done many things in regards to creating businesses, been involved in businesses, small, medium, large, up from, from startups right to conception to inception to execution. Um, but, but I've always come back to writing. Right. I always come back to writing. So, yeah, I figured that... Um, be an entrepreneur so and, and, and that consists of helping other people to write, yes. being a book coach. Um, it also means putting on workshops, facilitating, you know, selling my own work, that kind of stuff. So I'm um, being involved in other people's work and that, and that it, you know, consists of making me, or makes me yeah. an author and an entrepreneur. But the, so tell me, yeah. Kwame, you're here in Jamaica, we're here in Jamaica, it's beautiful here, yeah, but you were born in England, That's right? right. Yeah. You were born in England and you grew up in Jamaica. Tell us how that actually went for you, what was that like? Alright, I came to Jamaica when I was probably about seven years old, and my dad and my mother had, myself and my brother came here, mm -hmm. and I had a family breakdown in regards to relationship between my father and my mother so he decided I was going to come home and he took us with him and yeah the, the, the transition funny enough I don't remember anything the few glimpses of that childhood yeah. in regards to being in so for example I do remember a school down by Hornsey I think it was I used to attend primary school mm -hmm. and I have glimpses of that in my memory um, I remember that the head teacher used to be a German woman I do remember that right you know um, there's glimpses of where you used to live and then uh, in Haringey and that kind of stuff. But aside from that, I can't tell you anything else in regards to that experience, you know? All of my memories and all of my experiences have been in Jamaica. Right. And everything everything in regards to childhood and growing up and, and having a wonderful childhood mm. is what stamped in my memory more than anything else. So, so yeah, so coming here at that age, but I, what I do remember, mm. what I do remember was being on a Pan Am flight. Okay. And I remember getting Pan Am, sick. I remember them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember getting sick mm. because I ate too much chocolate chuck, chuck, chuck cake. I remember that. Oh kind of vomited. God. I vomited at the end. You still like chocolate cake? I love chocolate. I love chocolate. I love chocolate. So, same yeah, yeah. Go on. I, I love chocolate. I do remember that. The mm -hmm. first time coming back, coming yeah. home, I do remember that, that incident. That, mm -hmm. So that stamped in my memory. But aside from that, like I said, everything else has been about growing up in Jamaica, growing up in Kingston in particular. You know what I mean? Meeting. Well, I see you wearing the shirt. Of my school. Of your school. High school yeah, Tell yeah. us about the high school. All right. So I went to, went to town primary. And then from town primary, it was funny enough, which a lot of people don't know, but back in the 60s, mm -hmm. 70s, a lot of Jamaican people who went up with a five-year plan mm -hmm. actually came back with their British-born children, mm -hmm. quite a lot. Because when, when I went to town primary, there's quite a number of British-born children who attended. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, and then I started to realize that there's a lot of 
Jamaicans who are British passports right. because they, they were born in England because of that, that journey, mm -hmm. that transition. So, when the, so if you take it to the, to, to the next stream in regards to Windrush and those, that generation who went up, the one that came after, very shortly after, like in the 60s, they actually came back with the children. Right, um, and right. so a lot of children grew up here. So I was one of those children who, you know what I mean, um, came out with a, with a British passport. So, um, so time primary is where a lot of, um, a lot of British born children were. I uh, transitioned from there to Calabar High School, which was the greatest day, the years of my life, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best boys school in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Some people argue. A lot of people argue. <laughs> about Calabar that. High School. I've we heard so we... much about Calabar from I've been here in Jamaica. It's like the main school. One, yeah. That everyone I, I, talks to be about. admittedly, I would say it's one out because it's quite a number. Yeah. And everybody will be loyal and will, will, will say their school is the best. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to boys' school, yeah. there's a competitiveness amongst the main boys' school. So, right. you know, and each one would say that they're in the school. Which is, which is, which is to tell you, when you That's look at it, yeah, yeah, it is okay. And, and, to, and I would also say, like I said, because of that loyalty and love for particular institution, mm -hmm. we would all say that. But um, I'm respect to everyone else because, like I said, as I'm loyal to my school, they're loyal to their school. You yeah, know what I mean? And it's all right. good. It's all good. You know, but, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm um, kind of is what molded me really to be. Um, who I, who I am today to a great extent. You know? So did you do any writing in school? No, I didn't. But I was, I, and funny enough, I didn't do anything. Only primary school I did writing. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't interested in writing even even in high school. Um, mm -hmm. my, whereas my brother was was um, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. He, was, he actually might have won awards in high school. I didn't, because I, I wasn't writing. Okay. It's only I left. So he was older or younger? Younger. And right. it was only uh, actually... We talked about this the other day because only when I left and returned back to the UK, returned and, and returned to the UK where I started writing, mm. and it, then he stopped. He, well, after leaving high school, he didn't write anymore. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and so, okay. some, some, something we shared the other day, and he said, which is interesting. He, he, he just said, that, yeah, he didn't, he didn't follow through with it, but I did. Mm. And and, it, and the seed was planted when I was working in the civil service. One of the first, second job I got when I was in the UK. Mm. And when I had returned, and, and it was out there, someone had said to me if I knew anything about poetry. And I said, Yeah, I could. And then they asked me to do a, a personalized poem, personalized in terms of characteristics. They wanted to do a poem to their loved one. I, I asked them for characteristics, a trait of the person, and, and wrote a poem, and they loved it. And then other people heard, and that was that's where it started. That's when poetry. you first realized that you can write. Well, I, that really? yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really even a realization. I just did it, <laughs> you know, right. what I mean? um, because somebody asked me, and then like I said, I started charging people. Funny enough, I charged people for doing the poems, okay. but I didn't. I didn't realize. I didn't have the realization. Didn't come until way, way, way later on. Yeah, you know, what I mean, but I just did it for as a hobby. You know, I was featured in the civil service um, newsletter and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but I just the realization didn't hit me until years later. Years and that's later. what that's what I like about your story as well, is because it, you, you haven't just always just been a writer. Yeah. You're actually quite multi talented. You've done so many other things yeah. in your life that that as you you said before that it isn't actually your you know what made you become a writer, but has been a part of the journey. Yeah. You yeah. know, I like how you said it earlier beautifully. You yeah. talked about the house yeah. and different rooms in the yeah. house. So tell us a little bit about, just a little bit about some of the other things that you've done in in life before we get back onto the writing. Because okay. well, you're, you're a very interesting man. <laughs> and people don't know. <laughs> yeah. So in terms of, so I've been I've been able to travel, I've been able to live elsewhere, I've been able to be right across the African diaspora. I would say. Mm -hmm. So I so I've 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 been I was a, a singer, <laughs> you know, a past life and a sound system. In Tottenham, a singer. Yeah, yeah. You see, I was gonna, I was gonna actually touch on that a bit later, actually, because I want to leave something. But as soon as you've gone there, <laughs> yeah. you were a singer in Apparently. a sound system. Yeah, in a sound system. Years right? Ago. Yeah. Years ago. Listen, not just a writer, a singer. We've got to draw this man out. Okay, he's got a voice in there. <laughs> I don't there. know. If I, I don't know if I'm the voice. He's got a voice in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. So I we had some friends from Colorado actually. We met up in London, right? So, but they were younger than me, so I didn't know them. But we got to get to know each other, and we realized that we attended the same school, so we became friends. So they were the DJs, and I was the singer. Mm. <laughs> and now, because all of us came from Jamaica back then, okay. all of us used to move very close together, very tight. They're still tight to this day, you know. But um, yeah, so so that's what happened. I was a singer, and I found this I was um, yeah. What else? How, what? how long did you do that for? Oh man. How long was it for? For a little while. We did it for a while. For a few years. Yeah, and okay. there was some other some other region from me who were DJs on the sound system. Mm. Yeah, so um, yeah, all the Broadway farm is called Studio One. Yeah. Fantastic. And there's some other 
great things about you as well. You went to school with somebody quite famous. Is that right? Somebody, in fact, I know it's right. <laughs> you went to school with somebody that a lot of us know and love, who's also in music, also made it very oh. <laughs> big in the industry <laughs> and, and the you class. and him were in the, the same class, yeah, yeah, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's just amazing yeah. the shoulders when we wrote shoulders with certain people yeah. how that can influence yeah, yeah, tell yeah. us who that, that yeah 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 so, so yeah so Rory 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 a lot of people don't know his last name when I won't mention it here yeah. but, um, but Rory came to my school when I was a color he came to our class who's Rory for those that don't know Rory Rory is a top selector for so long Stone Love Sound System. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Rory yeah, we went to Rory and, and I. Was, yeah, yeah, we were right. good friends back in the day. And yeah, yeah. So he came from another country in Europe. Funny enough, a lot of people don't know that either. Yeah. And ended up coming to Jamaica and getting involved with music. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So Rory was, um, was in my class back in the day. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that that that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, 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 Rory, because Rory. you know, it was we've been talking. You know, we've known each other a while. So we've been talking, and you mentioned about. Um, you know your your ability to gain more wealth if yeah. you stayed here in Jamaica and you know we're yeah. in the season of Windrush at the moment. Yeah, yeah, we're going yeah. to 75 years of Windrush yeah. and I know these are some of the debates that yeah. we've been having about did we feel it was right for them to yeah. go over to England yeah. and stay or should have gone to England and yeah. made money yeah, and brought back. the children yeah. back yeah, exactly. and you're saying right right you know that if you could stay here yeah. you feel that you could further on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain I, that I, I think, I think, um, when, I, when I come back and I'm, I'm up here, um, as much as I've achieved what I have academically in terms of traveling the world and gaining wisdom, which I, I have no regrets of, of, of that journey, you know, I have no regrets whatsoever. But um, when, when I look at the fact that um, I come and I see how my friends have moved from where we were in regards to their aspirations, the uh, acquisitions of, the, of what they've created in terms of business, in terms of the, the, the wealth that they've, they've been able to create. Um, and I've seen that in comparison to myself. And I said to myself, I wonder what would have happened if I had stayed. And because, you know I mean, it, it, it's all good. There's nothing illegal on the world. They're you know, upright citizens in their own right. And they have moved and acquired, um, even when we started from where we did, where we were at. Mm -hmm. you know, I remember one time when we, we, didn't have, we didn't have a car. None of us had a car. Right. So when we were going out partying or clubbing and stuff like that, we, are, we are actually walked. <laughs> I had clubs right on, like in Uptown, a lot of clubs in Uptown. So we were able to walk home and walk from where we used to live out from my line. And then one, one of our brethren get a car, and then everybody part up in the car, and then they move from one car into another one of a car, and then, <laughs> and then you could see the, the, the movement, the mobility. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Want to be able to go to buy a home and all that kind of stuff. And then you said to yourself, hmm, I wonder what, I wonder if, you know, but it is what it is in terms of life journey. I've come back with part of the skills which they probably wouldn't, don't, don't have, right. you know what I mean? I've, I've been able to travel the world, which many of them haven't done. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's, a, it's, 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 it's you know, as it's, it's, it's a it balance. It has its good and, yeah, and, and bad, doesn't it? Yeah, in a sense, but it's the way life is, right? So you just, you know, you realize that your journey had to take you on a particular route, yeah. and you, you had to take that route, and, and, I'm, and that's, it is what it is. But, you know, you, you look back and you can, you can ask these questions, you know? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't regret where I've been or where I am now, because mm -hmm. of where I am now, right? Mm -hmm. Because all of it is the part of where I am. Right. So, so, but it, it, it sometimes when you have those thoughts and you say, well, I wonder what would have happened if. You yeah, know? but that doesn't but, really matter because really the journey, like you said, yeah. has happened. Yeah, happened. This is where we, we, we've yeah. got to right now. Yeah. And I suppose it is a good thing as well because then we've got two different stories. That's right. Exactly. Like we said, those that stayed, those that exactly. came back. Exactly. I always used to say to my mum as well, yeah. you know, why didn't you have me in Jamaica? Why have you stayed right. here? Right. Why didn't you go back to Jamaica? Because right. I don't want to be here in England. Yeah. You know what I mean? She was like, look, I'm going to up your mom. Anyway. <laughs> but it was, hey, which you is don't know where you're talking because yeah. they, they actually thought that being in England yeah, would have, yeah. was the better choice, yeah, exactly. wasn't it? For, and, and, and admittedly, for a lot of people, that's what that's what they were told to, to believe. Mm. You know what I mean? Because my, my thinking is, is, you know what I mean, is that they should have gone and come back. That, that's my that's my thinking. They yeah. should have gone up and come back, like what my father did. Yeah. And like many other people that I know who also did. Um, rather than staying. And, and, yeah, because what well, I've been doing to know. I think Jamaica topic. would be in a, bit, a better state yeah. if we did all come back and put our money so. back in. Yeah, I think yeah, so. I, I really, I really, really do think so. I really do think that. And they would have been a part of the whole society in terms of, you know what I mean, particular mindset in how to work and how to do things and processes, yeah. all that kind of stuff, all that yeah. skill set. 
True. You know and I mean? farming missed, as well. Yeah, we missed out on it. All of that. Out on a lot uh, of that. All of that, I think, we missed out on in terms of them going out, learning what they need to learn, mm. getting qualified, and coming back. My father came back as a contractor. Right. And then he came back and he, he got himself involved in the building sector. Mm -hmm. So he was able to bring back his expertise in regards to how man will work and all that kind of thing. Even though, you know, some, sometimes there were some arguments. But he, got, he was able to do that, yeah. to bring that kind of skill set and knowledge and experience mm -hmm. back to Jamaica to, to, to do and create what he did. So I really do think that if at that time, yeah, if our parents had come back with their children mm -hmm. to, to help. Build, build, back, build, build up, yeah. or, or, because yeah. it was a nice country even back then. The yeah. roads were much better than yeah, they are yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was, I think, so. but I like I said, a lot of people leave because the grass is greener. And like I said, for myself, when I was, when I returned to the UK and I saw what I saw and I heard what I heard and experienced it, I said, damn, what the? Right, <laughs> oh, right. oh, oh, people can live in this kind of. You know, when I heard about how the schools used to treat the children, the man. Oh, the children they weren't weren't allowed to be anything more than mm -hmm. what the teacher thought or a counselor thought they should be, and that kind of mindset, you know, yeah. um, not one of empowering but disempowering, you know. I, I couldn't understand. Like in Jamaica, regardless of where you are, you will be empowered to, to be better than where you are. Of and course, I, of course. And that, is yeah, and, yeah, it is, and I yeah. couldn't understand that until I went there and saw institutionalized stuff and systemic stuff that was going on, and said, man, you know. <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, and absolutely I crazy. I that, and 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 with saying that as well, would you say then that you doing the, applying for the competition here in Jamaica? Do you think the vibes, the spirituality, yeah. the energy in Jamaica is greater it, 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 for for I think that type of thing? Oh, totally. I think the Caribbean and in Jamaica in particular mm. is a positive vibration. I do really because it, it's not the first time I've entered. I entered nine times. The one time I entered in Jamaica. For the same? Yeah, for the same. Nine same. times. Oh, wow. Nine, nine times. times. I was only, I was myself in the court and checked it. Nine times. That's 2009. That's 2009, I entered the first time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 2009, I entered the first time. And then, and then, but then, like I said, it's not as if I was doing anything different. Yeah. Um, but when I came back home, when I forward back home, I just started writing and the vibration that it took for the writing obviously got me to where I am today. So, the, so, 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 so hold on, so you applied nine times from the UK, yeah. from England? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I never, I, I wasn't even shortlisted, go wow. figure, yeah. So the one year, the ninth time I come home, yeah. and I just, within a year and a half, bear that mind, bear that mind too, bear yeah. within a year and a half of returning home, wow. that I've been shortlisted, one for the Caribbean, and now I've won for the international. So, so, and I keep I saying that to some people, some people say, I say, listen, nobody can't tell me no different. I've experienced it. There's, there's a vibration in Jamaica which can enhance whether it's good or whether oh, it's bad. Absolutely. It will enhance I agree. the energy that is, is abundant to, yes. to, to the individual. You know what I mean? There's a particular energy here which once you tap into it, yes. especially positively, it, yes. you, you, you don't know where to take it. I agree 100%. And, 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 and then there's examples of that too because, and this is what I think people don't, a lot of people don't realize. I think a lot of creatives do, mm -hmm. you know, like songwriters, especially especially the, the, the old school one, yeah. songwriters, DJs, they're understanding them. Yeah. You know what I mean? The rust is them understanding them. The vibration. Yes, of course. You understand? And, and for writers, so for example, when Ian Fleming decided to write James Bond, you know, mm. remember, it's right in Jamaica. Yes, yes. Right? So, so when you look at those things and you say, well, I mean, there's, there's something about why people come here and have achieved what they've achieved in regards to, to the energy that, that, that exists. They tapped into it and it, it enables you to become much bigger than you ever thought you could. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's the reason why, like I said, a lot of singers and songwriters understand that, especially the most of them. I mean, yeah, some young ones too understand it also. You know, there's some of us who understand the vibration of our yes, and, yeah. and, and, and the creativity that it enables and allows to be much, much more powerful and bigger than it ever can be. And it would be amazing if we all just came together yeah. and just tapped in, Yeah, right? I'm telling you. Jamaica, and that's why they say Jamaica is a special place. Yeah. I think a lot of people know it's special, but they don't know why. But, yeah, that is true. Yeah. But I think they've been giving a six or a nine a lot of the time as yeah. well, because they think it's 
good because of the music and it's yeah, good because yeah, no, of it's it, that. but there's so no, yeah. much more, so much deeper yeah. reasoning and rationale that, that certain other people do know, that's yeah. why they come here that's right. and tap in somebody and do what they do yeah. and gain what they gain. That's right. So one, right? Somebody said to me once, I said, it's a portal. I said, I, I, I can believe it that. It is a portal. Uh, yeah, I Absolutely. I said, I can believe that. I said, no, that. I said, it's, a, it's a portal. But like I said, so, some people said, probably said to you, you're talking. <laughs> you know, but I said, I know oh, what I know. I know, I know okay. what I know. I know what right. I know. You understand? Know and I, I'm an example of that. Yeah. You understand? Know right. so, so, so nobody can tell me any different. You know so, with that said, where do you get your inspiration? You know, when you're writing, do you kind of like go and sit under a tree or go to the river? Do you write with a pen? You know, do, how, how do you get your inspiration and how do you allow it to transpire? Uh, um, so the writing, writing comes, all right. So initially, and, it, and I guess it's a place, um, because I've, like I said, I've been, I've had the opportunity of traveling. I've been to the motherland. Mm -hmm. I've been to Ghana. And I have seen, for example, visit the Cape Coast, where, which is one of the forts. I think there's about far, you know, there's about 40,000 places where they live in Chakos. Okay. Yeah, they have about five. Some, some might number, but anyway. Yeah, in Ghana. No, across the motherland. Oh, across the motherland. Okay. Um, but I went to Ghana in particular, and I went to Cape Coast. And it was whilst in Cape Coast that there's a part, part of the resonance that you feel in terms of the ancestry. And they made me realize that there was some sort of something happening. You know, there was something happening. And, and I didn't know what it was. I was just a 2006. But then, but then when I came away, and, and I, I, this is the time when I was going through a depression and stuff like that. And I've written in my last book. But when I came away and I started to understand about certain things, about my purpose and my role in terms of on this, on this plane. It's only recently, so, so it's, it, it happens in phases, I guess. I guess, I guess you could say it happens in phases. Because initially, I won awards for writing, you know. When I was in Canada, I won awards for stories that I did. Right. And, you know what I mean, again, and, and I think it was at that time I started to take writing seriously. So I used to enter competitions like nobody did. I like, entered, I entered, I kept entering. And that's, and that's all I did. And uh, But I also wrote, wrote and help other people write and I've, you know, my number of books and stuff like that. Um, did a lot of stuff in other people's books. And it's only recently. Wait, 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 wait. That's the ancestors. Yeah, we'll no. Just give them a moment. <laughs> give them a moment. See? Mm. So it's only, what happened then? Yeah, the transition into the spiritual journey in regards to the whole thing here. Because I said to myself, something gave us said, you know what? Write, because you travel across African diaspora, have your stories that have that resonance, resonance in terms of the significance of that. Yeah. So I so I, I started to do writing that were focused on stories from the African diaspora. So for example, I wrote there's a, a, a publisher in the UK who had who was looking at diverse writers and I, I submitted four stories. They were doing doing, doing anthologies. So they had three anthologies and they wanted stories for all three. From various writers, diverse writers. So I submitted four stories. Now, apparently, what I was told, each author or each writer should only have, could only have one story. Right. Anyway, I submitted four and accepted three for the three anthologies, right? But what, what was more significant was the fact that, like I said, for example, they were looking for diverse writers. So I started to look at stories of our people. So one of, the, one of the themes that they had was alternate history. So alternate in terms of, so for example, you had a history of, say, I don't know, um, Christopher Columbus coming, to, Columbus coming to the Caribbean, but it wouldn't be Christopher Columbus, it'd be a, a black discoverer, if you want to call it that, rather than a white, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, my, so, so one of the stories that I, I wrote was based on that, it was about the Mayflower, right? The Mayflower being the, the ship that had the pilgrims who went to the States, right? So, but instead of it being pilgrims, it was African people who discovered white people or yeah. found white people. So, and that actually was accepted as a, one of the stories. So I started to realize, hold on a minute, I need to write more about our stories because a lot of what we, there's a lot of stories in African diaspora. You know I mean? A lot of rich stories. And the story that actually enabled me to win is a, is a mixture of stories from African diaspora. So, so the focus of my writing has changed or shifted to more African-based stories of the stories that have died within the African diaspora. And I tend to make some more. So the story that you wrote in this competition that you've made, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it's called Ocha Akuchi. Akuchi. Akuchi, I knew I was going to get it wrong. 
So tell us about the, that, that, that story. Um, it's part fiction. It's about yeah. the, the actual yeah. country, but the story yeah, 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 is fiction. Yeah. Talk us a little bit through that. Right. So Okohi was is an actual town mm -hmm. in Florida. Right. It was a black town. Okay. Right. Back in the 19th century, early 20th century, 20th century, mm -hmm. there were a lot of black towns in the states. Right. The majority of them, if not all of them, were raised to grow by racists. Right. Right. Yeah. So Okohi was one of them. So, and it was about 500 black people that were massacred at the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Based on some fictional, as which is always the case, some fictional white men accusing two black men and mm -hmm. they kick off. Mm -hmm. So, so the story, so, so Okohi itself is a is a Cherokee Indian word, which means wild apricot. Yeah, but but the town itself did exist, um, but it's still there now. Actually, it, it, it's still now. It's, it's, it's there now, but it's not a black town in Africa. So, and the story is based on an African Caribbean man's mm -hmm. journey through through the boonies and in terms of America and being stopped by police, mm -hmm. and then what ha transpired from that is ancestors come and repeat themselves to him, and they begin to find out that the town itself was. You know what I mean? Like he went back, like he went to the past. When people have to read it. Yeah. <laughs> you, know okay. you have to, <laughs> you have you have to get have to this book because it has story. A, this story, yeah. brother. Get this story um, because it has put Jamaica on the map. Yes, you know, it's allowed Kwame to be recognized for the skill set that he has. Yeah. You know, and it's true, it's, it's a true place. It's a place yeah. that, you know, once you get the story and get the inspiration, you may want to go and visit for yourself. I'd like to go and yeah. actually see this place, where it is, and what it's all about. So tell me, Kwame, you know when you were going for the for the competition, yeah. did you tell anybody that you, you No, you, I, I said no, 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 I don't tell you. You don't tell anyone, you just do the okay. thing. You know why I asked you? Yeah. It's because we hear it a lot, don't we, sometimes when you, you must work in secret, you yeah. must plan in secret. True. That's true, you, you, can't, you can't trust certain people. Yeah. And I know it's, it's not necessarily something that we all want to have in our lives, that we can't trust people yeah. and we can't tell people certain things. But do you feel that there's a vibration around actually keeping certain things to yourself, especially if it's so. like a competition and you want to win, keeping it to yourself? Or do you feel there's energy in letting your friends and family know? No, well, because I'm, I'm because personally speaking, I've entered so many. Mm. And I mean, I entered them all the time, so I'm not going to tell them. I entered them. No, no, I just, I just, I just do what I got to do. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Um, and in regards to this, this competition, I just did what I did, you know, and it, it so happened that, and you know, like I said, it, 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 I remember, like I said before, I, it's not the first time I've entered, mm. so I'm not gonna like I said, I'm not gonna share that information. But to get to where I have now is, a, you know, what I mean, is a testament to itself in regards to the journey, yeah. and in regards to, um, yeah, in regards to actually entering. So I continue to enter competitions, but I said all the time, um, um, and, and see what happens. And you say it's a short story. How yeah. how how short is a short story? I mean, is it, it a little pamphlet? How many words do you have to write to do a short story? It, it, it depends. Because so you have something called flash fiction, right. which tends to be about. Um, a thousand words a hundred. Okay. Um, short stories tend to be about well, a thousand words plus, and you have to like ten thousand for a short story. What? Yeah, yeah. So and then obviously you have novels. That sounds have, like a book. And then yeah, and then you have <laughs> ten thousand words. Yeah, you can have a ten thousand word story. Then you have wow. novels and novels and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So so a short story can it's dependent on on number of words for a short story. Right. Yeah. So you you you're the winner for the Commonwealth short story prize you know internationally and for the caribbean, and for the caribbean. <laughs> yeah. so proud of you brother thank you so proud of thank you me. but that's not the only thing you've penned and written because i've actually been reading a book that you've written okay. which is quite dear to my heart in terms of the topic right and it's to deal with mental health with men yeah. And I know we haven't talked about this much, and it, it is going to happen, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, I I really just want to sh um, you to share a little bit about how important it is for us to recognise that black men in particular, I'm saying other men don't have mental health, yeah. we're dealing with black people right now, okay? Yeah. Not that I should have to put that disclaimer in. No, but, you have to. But we have to. Yeah. So we're dealing with black yeah. men right now yeah. and mental health. And you've written a book called A Date, My, a date, date, My date, date with Depression. depression. Yeah. Just give me a, a, a quick synopsis about. Okay, and I, and remember, I touched on the fact that I went to the Cape Coast Castle. That's right. Yeah. What I recognized when I was going through what I was going through, my depression was brought on by financial failure, business failure, relationship failure, all that kind of stuff. That's all my depression came about in a nutshell. 
what I realized when I went to the fort, right? One thing I would say to anyone, and I, I would say this, I wish I could take every single African Caribbean person, not even African American, but African Caribbean people, people in particular, to visit mm. one of those forts. Yes. Because for me and my experience, mm. I stood up, I went into a dungeon and I, and all, this, all the stuff that I was carrying, well, the labels, like, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, you know, uh, right or not, like, all the labels, you know, being a graduate from which part of the school or being born wherever, whatever. All those labels that I had, had to be stripped away. Right. So, so, all the stuff that I was carrying, I had, it's almost like I had to stand in front of the ancestors. Mm -hmm. I had to stand in front of the ancestors and be naked. You understand what I mean? There's no other way. Yeah. So, there's no, I couldn't wear a mask. I couldn't be... I couldn't, I, I couldn't, no, I couldn't wear a mask anymore. I couldn't, I couldn't have, I couldn't be lying. I yeah. couldn't lie. So, so I stood before the ancestors in such a way that I had to be naked. And that meant stripping everything away. Everything. That we were uh, an exactly. ego, everything. everything. Everything had to be stripped away because it made me realize that what I was going through was nothing compared to what they were going through. Mm. You know what I mean? There's no, you can't, you can't put no, and I, and I, and I just wish I could take people to make them understand. The depression that we're feeling today, the societal stuff that comes above mm. and, and on top, it's almost like a layer, it's like an onion, everything's layered. But the fact of the matter is, to me, that's where the trauma started. Right. So, for example, can you imagine, can you imagine that you had a man who had his girlfriend or his wife and his children, right? The last he's seen of them, you know, is when the shackles are being led into because they they're not the same cell, right, they're in different right. cells, That's right. right? So the last he's going to see of them, you know, is when being led towards these cells in this castle, this fort, right? Now remember, you know, he's shackled and chains also, you know. So he wants to cry, he wants to bawl, he wants to kill the people who are doing that to his own people, to right. his women, to his, his intimate, you know what I mean, like as his children. You know, anybody would do that. Any parent would do that. You know what I mean? Any man would do that. He would fight for his woman, right? So can you imagine a man is being so disempowered that he can't do that? He can't afford to cry. Yeah. He can't afford to cry in front of the slavers. You know, the enslavers. He can't afford because if he's shown to be crying in front of them, that's a sign of weakness yeah, to them. Exactly. So he, but he's tearing up inside. Mm -hmm. So he's carrying that burden with him, knowing that he's powerless. He can't do a thing. Trust me, who wouldn't be depressed by that? It happens so much. It's, well, dep depression right. is the opposite to expression, isn't it? Right. If you can't express how okay. you're feeling, right. what you're saying, you couldn't expect. And so many of our black men are, are living that life right yeah. now where they feel that they cannot express how they're really feeling inside about something yeah. for fear of being seen to be weak. Exactly. And, that, and, you know? and that's where it started. Yes. And until we, re we revisit that, mm -hmm. in my mind, that's the only way to be able to heal. I always say it's important to look at the root. Yeah, you, man, have you have to heal to, the root. Yeah, man, you have, you have to, to heal the root. the root or treat the root. Yeah. You know, you have to. And I think a lot of us bypass. A lot of us don't take that into consideration. Yes, it's important. A lot of us, what we're going through today as a people, is stamping our DNA, Absolutely. and that is one. And that's one element of it. Yes. I, I, I said that, and, I'm, and I would say I'm no psychologist. I'm no physiotherapist. None of them things. I just know based on my own experience. Mm. And to me, that is so fundamental and important to understand that. That a man seeing his woman and his children being taken away, and he can't do anything about it. Trauma, and that trauma is sat so deep in our psyche, right. in our DNA, okay. that it's just completely it's been there perpetuated you go. There you go. through the generations. Exactly. So, and um, that's why I'm so proud of you that you've yeah. written this book, you know, and that you're helping other men come out of something that can be cured. You yeah, can man. come yeah, out man. of it. You don't come have on. to stay. You don't have to be no, don't. medication or anything I, like no, that. No, it doesn't. Doesn't it? Don't it's have just to be. recognizing. Yes. That there's a source. Mm. There's a source, and, and as most people say, oh, it's maybe I'm long term. No, no, it's not. It's not. It's, it's what happened to you genetically, yes. based on. As they said, it is said, you know, that when uh, when they're gonna kill, you know, for meat and all that. So say you're gonna kill a goat or a cow and stuff like that. Remember, you know, the shock of killing that animal is within the meat itself. Oh God, call me. Talk to the people, them. You understand know me? Talk to them. So, so, so the cat. So, so. So the they know that they're gonna it's the last days. Can you imagine if yes. that's happening to an animal what they the have to anxiety, us? The anxiety, the depression, right. the stress, okay. the fear. Okay. You know, of okay. all of that that's going on, of course that's all within us as well. Yeah, it's, of so, course it is. It's important, you know. So 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 for me, like I said, so the book itself is a, a reflection of my that particular journey yeah. that I had. And and understanding 
where it came from and understanding who I am and understanding my purpose and it has enhanced the writing actually it's made the writing much stronger than it has ever been so so Fantastic. so yeah yeah so it's um yeah man it's something that we need to recognize and something that we need Absolutely. to talk about more we do and, need and, to talk and, about and, it more and we need to and we need to find ways of addressing it and I think that's the way it has to be and trust me if I could take everybody and say come we take you to the fort and make you see for yourself mm. and get to understand because when you get to trust me when you go and you're before the ancestors, you, there's nothing else that you can be about yeah, just be. Exactly. You know what I mean? And I would love to let I would love to um have more people to know about your book. Okay. You know, and My to, day with to get that. Where where can they actually get that? Actually book? it's online, it's on it's on Amazon or Lulu.com. Amazon yeah, Lulu.com. Yeah. My date with depression by Kwame McPherson. From mental uncertainty to self fulfillment. Fantastic. I love that. absolutely loving that. You know, it's always a pleasure, Kwame, to to meet up with you, to connect with you. One thing I'd like to ask you is, if there's anyone in England, you know, across the Americas who have Jamaican parentage, Jamaican heritage, and they're thinking or considering to come home to Jamaica, what would you say to them to encourage them and inspire them? Forward. <laughs> <laughs> Quick and fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forward. And the reason why I said that is because I was sharing this up to yesterday, I think it was with yourself. Mm. It's, a, it's about freedom. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're not really free in, 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 in the West. You're not free. It's a fallacy of freedom. It's, it's, you can acquire a lot of stuff. You can have all this stuff. You can have the, the most house or care, whatever. But it's all a fallacy. It's all a lie. Because at the end of it, it can be taken away very easily. As well as your mental state right. in terms of acquiring that stuff and to maintain it. You know what I mean? What kind of stress have you put yourself under in you know, order to have all that kind of stuff? But so to me, it's about, you know, the idea that I'm just simple living. All the, that type of life I lived, you know what I mean? I've been with billionaires and billionaires and all that kind of stuff. And you know what I mean? To me, it's just about simple living nowadays and just, yeah, just to go through life purpose. But I was just trying to forward. Forward. See what Jamaica has to offer. Jamaica does have a lot to offer. Jamaica does need help. In regards to developing to be a better country and, this is and a better it. nation, you know what I mean. And this the only way it. that I believe, one of the ways I think that can happen, is that there needs to be more wise people who have lived it elsewhere and have the yes. wisdom and can see in order to come back and contribute. So that's Absolutely. what I would say. Absolutely. Would say. And bring your skills, bring yeah. everything that you've got. Yeah. Bring it here and let's come together and build a better, yeah, man. A have the wind stronger rush. Jamaica. Wind rush in reverse. Wind rush in reverse. Exactly. That is it. So. There you have it, Kwame McPherson right here with me, Chris O'Neill. He is the international, I can't even stop saying it, can't stop saying it, the international, that been across the world, you know, the glue of it. All right, the winner of the Commonwealth Short Story Prize is my brethren, and I'm so proud of him. And I want you to keep and find out where he is. And in fact, what, 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 what's happening? Have we got something that we can look forward to seeing you anywhere? Have we got anything oh, in the wow. pipeline? What's not, happening in well, the future? Well, what I can say is that there's a number of books that I'm writing in the pipeline mm -hmm. at this point in time. I'm, I'm reconstructing my business. So, so in regards to um, having a stronger online presence in regards to our website right. and all that kind of stuff. But people can Google my name and they can find me. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. You know what I mean? Um, TikTok, not TikTok. I'm on Twitter. Twitter. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, people can find me. So, I'm so um, Kwame McPherson. Kwame yes. McPherson. K W A M E McPherson. M C P H E R S O N. You heard it right there, right here on the Elevation Show with me, Trisha on the Elevator. I look forward to seeing you all once again, somewhere, somehow. Remember, don't forget to click a like, comment, share. Because you heard, and it's not right if you don't share, because sharing is caring. Remember, we don't hate, we elevate, and love is the highest frequency. We'll be back with some more great interviews. Bye for now.